Hello and welcome to another part of What If Luffy Was Never Born. We are, like I always say in those last few videos, inching to the ending of the pre time skip era. And today we're going to look at the Marineford arc. The end of an era and the beginning of a new one. But what is going to happen in this version of One Piece? Well, let me tell you about all of that in this video. So, first of all, quick recap to what happened last week. Last week we ventured through Impel Down with all of this stuff happening with Blackbeard, Ivankov, Jimbei and all these different people. But the biggest thing that we actually took out of this scenario is that the fighting power, the battle power that Luffy and all the escapees would have brought to, to the Marineford battle, they don't exist. So that's going to be, well, it's going to change a lot of things in this arc. We are currently at 76 steps, but a war? A war might change that number, so let's see how that turns out at the end of this video. So let's get right into it, because I think this might be a bit longer than the other videos. The Summit War Saga. Coming to an end of the Marine Forward arc. Well, not actually the full end, because there's still the post-war stuff, but the climax is here. So, let's look at it. Poa Hancock is not on the battlefield. There is no reason for her being there. She only went to Marine Forward because of Luffy, so she is not there and she won't help the Marines or the Pirates. She's going to stay in neutral in that sense and will just stay on Amazon Lily. How that is going to turn out? I mean, they told her she would lose her position as a, like, a warlord if she does that, so I still think she wouldn't go even with that threat of losing her position, but that means she will lose her position, so that's another slot open. Like, one, uh, the first one we lost was Blackbeard, Blackbeard, uh, not Blackbeard, uh, Crocodile lost his position and Blackbeard got the position, so that's the slot open. Uh, the slot fills. And now with Hancock gun, there's another slot open. And well, with Jimbei being imprisoned, he also opens up another slot. So technically there are at the moment only five warlords, which are Blackbeard, Mihawk, uh, Kuma, Blackbeard, Kuma, uh, Mihawk, Moria, and Doflamingo, those five. But when you think about this, this is going to change at least at the end of this arc, where Blackbeard is going to probably lose this position as well with all of the stuff that he's going to do. And now we also think Jimbei, Luffy and Buggy obviously are also not in Marineford. Buggy is just chilling in the in the east. Buggy is chilling in the east with his party people, just relaxing, whatever he wants to do. Uh, Luffy is not born and Jimbei, well, he might come to Marineford, but he will will only arrive a bit later because he was with the Blackbeard people if he joins them or like if he escapes with through all of the stuff that's going on with them so he might arrive a bit earlier than Blackbeard because he's a fishman so he can travel faster I guess but uh, that also depends on how fast Blackbeard was able to travel there did they, did they go by ship or did they have some sort of other movement like we don't know that actually but that also means Crocodile is also not there. We all know that in the canon version, one of the biggest reasons why Crocodile helped Luffy was because he knew Whitebeard was coming to Marineford. So with Whitebeard still being there because of all of that stuff, that means Blackbeard still might come to Marineford. He might be appear like as a third force, not working together with the Marines or with the uh, allied forces of Whitebeard, he might just appear there to wreak havoc and show Whitebeard that he grew stronger. Because is it confirmed that the, the scar that uh, Blackbeard has is something he got from Whitebeard? Or is that just some head cannon that I had? Please tell me. Uh, anyways, I think Black, uh, Crocodile might arrive on this place here. But what he's going to do, well, if he has Pluton, holy shit, we don't know what's going to happen. If not, he might just attack a few people here and there, make his name known because he got stronger fr uh, from the past and stuff. Just crocodile things, you know. But then we come to the biggest part of this. Ace's execution. 
we all know that Ace's execution was a big like turning point in the story. We experienced a death, we experienced all different things, but Sengoku's speech also revealed a lot of different things. For example, that Ace was the son of the Pirate King, Gold D. Roger. And well, all of that means uh, the speech takes place normally and Ace's fate takes place normally. Uh, just like that, the arrival of uh, the White Beard Pirates will also uh, like just do everything like they did before. And Ace, well, he is going to die. The biggest thing you need to think about here is that Garp only has one son in a sense. He adopted Ace because he wants to help Roger at least one last time. Because he doesn't have, not child, grandchild, uh, because he doesn't have Luffy, that means Ace is his, basically his only grandchild. Does he act differently now on the execution or will he just accept that fate? We don't really know about that. Because uh, Grand, uh, Garp was like, he's a caring grandpa. Like, even if he just gave uh, Ace, Luffy and whatever to uh, Dadan in uh, Fusha village, it, it's, it was still like for their best. He could have pushed them like immediately into like a marine situation in his space or something and raised them from baby age to marine soldier or something. But he was like, at least give them a normal, somewhat normal childhood on the whole island. But is he going to stop that execution? Well, even if he was trying to do, Sengoku is at least trying to stop him from acting up. But with all of that said, Whitebeard will arrive with all of his people. Shosu, Marco, Vista and all the other people who are commanders. And they are a force to be reckoned with, but without like the people from Impel Down, all of the escapees, all of these people who come down, uh, Ivankov, Luffy, Crocodile, Buggy, Jimbei, Mr. Free or Galdino I think is his real name and all the different like lower ranked, uh, lower ranked prisoners. Without all of these, the Marines have a way higher advantage, at least in numbers. But that is, is that already enough to say the battle is going to be more one-sided? I think yes. And it also means there are going to be more casualties in the battle. Probably on both sides, because this is going to be way more like aggressive in all of that sense, because the Whitebeard Pirates, there are probably going to be some some more deaths, but I say that the named characters we know of probably are not going to die because they're too strong for that. But uh, some of the, like, no named characters, but there will be smaller deaths. And I'm also not sure, is did Ors Jr., like the, the giant, the descendant of Ors, die in this arc? Or I think he's not confirmed that. I'm not really sure about that fact because as far like when I last looked and I can't remember the story telling anything about that, I think Ors Jr. was hurt badly, but he was not dead. So we don't really know what's going on with him. Uh, now we all know that the appearance of the pacifistas uh, made quite an impact on that battle because pacifistas or just th thousands of kumas or like how many ever they, they were. Uh, they actually change the battle because they are crazy strong, at least in that part. Like, we know that Gear 2nd Luffy after the time skip could easily defeat him, which means that people like Marco, Vista, Jozu and like the higher ranking commanders could probably defeat them just as easily, I guess. But for the, for the smaller people, for the only for the like the soldiers, so to say, those things are a menace. They have no chance against winning uh, winning against them. And that is also a reason why the Whitebeard Pirates have it so much harder. And now we actually come to the execution. Without Luffy's wave of Conqueror's Harky, even though it was uncontrolled and all of that, without that, Ace will just be executed by those two people. He will be executed right here and now. Garb probably not having the time to react or whatever he wants to do because with all of the stuff happening when uh, Akainu uh, was there to fight against Ace and Whitebeard and Jimbei and also attack Luffy in that sense, Garb had more time to think about all of that and happening. But while this was happening, 
he can't really do much because it's a conf it's it's planned. Nobody can do much here. In my opinion, Ace is going to die in this execution, and this is the part where Whitebeard's mission is going to change. Until now, this was a rescue mission. They wanted to rescue Ace and make sure that they can rescue their son, their brother, brother their commander, or whatever rela relationship they had with Ace. But now, this is a revenge mis a mission. With one last burst of power, Whitebeard is going to turn this whole place upside down, destroying the entirety of Marineford. But because the mission is over in that sense, uh, Whitebeard is enraged because of the loss of Ace. And he can't just escape from here, he can't just retreat. But all of his children, all of his sons and well his one daughter, uh, he's going to tell them to leave. They are not meant to die here. He's already only a remnant of an old era, but they are the future. So he is going to do everything he can on his own while all the others escape. Uh, all of that is going to happen. Like, I could say that it's going to be hard because uh, in the canon version we got the three admirals and they were busy with other people. Uh, but mainly I could also see like that uh, Sakazuki or what's his uh, actual name, uh, Akainu. Uh, is going to do it alone and be like, I can handle this alone, you just make sure that nothing uh, crazy happens. So, all of the other stuff happening with uh, the, the ice from uh, Kuzan uh, and whatever sort of stuff that uh, Kizaru wanted to do, like all of these things happen in like a more minor way, because if I didn't say that, this is just going to be a massacre. Whitebeard is going to fight and going to turn everything upside down. He, while all of his people escaped, uh, there is also not any way to mock like the, the people from the Whitebeard crew because Ace is already dead and Akainu can't mock them. Which means the Whitebeard pirates are just going to continue, not their escape, but like their getaway. It, it's not that they're running away, they're just leaving because their captain told them to do so and they respect their father. They respect his last wishes and all of that also means the battle between Whitebeard and Akainu takes place. Whitebeard might be already a bit more wounded than before but like in this actual version because now he fought against a few more people because all of the allied forces from the, the Impel Down place is not, are not there. So he's going to be a bit more hurt before fighting against Akainu but it's mostly going the same way as we expected to go. And all of that we also know, Whitebeard destroys Marineford. His crew, uh, with that he separates his crew and himself from, like, from each other. And the Marines, well, they don't really have a way to follow them right now because they can they can swim over the places, but if worst case, uh, Whitebeard smashes those two ground places together and they all die. So it's a bit hard to say what they are going to do, but this is my version uh, and I say the Whitebeard Pirates, uh, the named ones, can escape here without any like major problems. Now we got Whitebeard against Akainu, as I said everything goes normal and then we come to, well it's not a big change, but the arrival of Blackbeard with all of his new people. If Jembe would be on this picture, it's up to you to decide, but Jembe might have appeared earlier or with them and well he at least helped somewhat in the Whitebeard fight I guess. Uh, so he probably arrived earlier. So he fought against Moria which meant Moria wasn't hurt or anything, he had all of his power. Which might make the battle a bit closer but in the end Jimbei still beats Moria in this battle. So that's a thing but this is only Moria's first loss. So. We don't really know how the world government would react to that. He did his job, he helped in the battle because of all his zombies and all of that stuff. But Jimbei is still too strong for him to handle at this moment. So Blackbeard and his crew kill Whitebeard. Blackbeard gains Whitebeard's devil fruit power. Which is insane because that's the first time people uh, see someone using two devil fruit powers. And they still have no idea how that is used. Uh, so what actually is the plan here? Blackbeard is just going to dip. 
he did that in the actual version as well. He got the power and sheesh, I'm out. He doesn't need to have any reason to continue all of that stuff here. So he will leave. <laughs> and that is the time when Shanks also appears. You might ask, why would Shanks appear? Shanks is still here to end the war. He had all of that like conversation or battle against Kaido to stop him from coming here. So, I guess you could argue that he only fought against Kaido or stopped him from coming there because he wanted to have Ace and like because he knows that Ace is Luffy's brother. But you could also turn like it's just a way of respecting Whitebeard because he he like warned Whitebeard about Blackbeard and th told him not to send Ace there and all of that. Like get Ace back, Blackbeard is too dangerous for all of you. And so he's still going to help him. He has some respect for Whitebeard because Whitebeard was a, the rival of Shanks' captain. So he he holds him in very high regard and he will stop the war because he still has the power. He might even be stronger than the, the canon version at this war. And this is the end of the Marineford War. We know that Marineford is destroyed and all the people will now retreat because the war has come to an end. Blackbeard will retreat. Shanks will try to do uh, like just tell everybody go home it's enough everybody can do what they want like the normal stuff with kizaru and ben backman happens someone else like lucky rue stops uh, uh kuzan or aokiji is his marine admiral name from like freezing the sea and stopping everybody it's just they stop the people and the, the war comes to an end and then there's still something happening in the background. This is up for you. What do you think is happening with this little small yellow submarine? Well, we will hear about that in the future. But first come the consequences of the Marineford arc. As we all know, there has been a few deaths. I only have two major deaths marked down here, which are Ace and Whitebeard. Ace and Whitebeard are officially dead now and that changes a lot of that because there's the Whitebeard pirates as we know them until now have come to an end. Like Marco can take over the position as the captain but with Ace Gun the position as second in command or second commander is gone and with Whitebeard gone the captain is gone and the Yonko position is being opened up. So the world is going to be in uproar about all of that. And we also know without Buggy there uh, the whole thing wouldn't get broadcasted. So the whole world wouldn't learn about uh, Whitebeard's speech about the One Piece is real, even though he will tell it to all the people who are on the island. Because that means the Marines are going to learn that this guy is saying the One Piece is real and his children who are going to escape also know for a fact now that the One Piece is real. Because we don't really know if he like talked about the One Piece with his all of the other people. So we can say that at least up at this moment they learned that One Piece is real and they might take this as the wish of Whitebeard to uh, like make sure that his children discover the One Piece and find it and reveal it to the world for him or something like that. This is like pulled at different strings and I'm not even Doflamingo but I guess some people could see it as his last wish to tell everybody the One Piece is real and his children, his sons and uh, the other people might take this as the wish of re uh, showing the world that the One Piece is real and that they need to find it for him. Uh, Whitebeard is dead. It's a major death. Well, there are many, many minor deaths probably of some random marine soldiers, maybe some vice admirals we don't know the names of, some of the Whitebeard smaller pirates, all of that happens. But Whitebeard is pretty much the biggest death in the series up until now. With the, the Yonko position post, uh, open up, it's probably going to follow the same path of Blackbeard filling in into that position later on. With all of what happened, Blackbeard is also going to lose his position as one of the Warlords of the Sea. So he, that means we are now at only four Warlords of the Sea, which means three slots are opened up. During the time skip, we got new warlords, which are uh, Weevil, that's one, 
we got buggy and we got law as far as I know so free uh, but without buggy there that means we have one open slot right now I mean I could say that during that time uh, this is probably just going to be stuff that actually needs to be addressed in the post-war arc or like in a something like what happened in the two-year time skip arc uh, if we include movies, that means Simon is on a wait list, and I didn't even know there's a wait list for. Uh, it's not ga movies; it's a game. The weird game where the Simon character with the paper fruit is from. Well, he might get the position finally, but I guess there are better people who are suited for the warlords. Like they could just choose. I don't know. Who's there? <laughs> who's who's a known pirate who could be a warlord? Technically, some, uh, someone else from the worst generation could try to uh, get into the position, or someone completely unknown. I might make a fan-made character, because up uh, from this point on, everything is going to be made up, because time skip stuff wouldn't happen without the Straw Hats. So I'm pretty much free to go on the time skip stuff until Wano, uh, however I want to go with it. Uh, so let's see how this is going to turn out. But first of all, the War of Marine Port doesn't take as long. Because without the people from Impel Down, that means the Whitebeard Pirates are like at a massive loss of power and they will have a harder time to fight here. The the whole war, I don't know how long it actually took time in One Piece, uh, but it will take sh a shorter time and all of that is going to happen, but it's going to end. Uh, and now we come to this boy here. The death of Ace causes the memory of Sabo to return to him. Sabo is still alive. Sabo is uh, in the revolutionaries with Dragon. He might be like the son Dragon never had because Dragon never had Luffy. But we all know how weird this situation is for him. He forgot about his only brother, the brother he got through a Sakazuki, and now the brother he lost through a Sakazuki. Well, he had lost his, uh, the brother through a Sakazuki in the actual version. In this version, he only lost it uh, lost it through two random Marine soldiers. Uh, if you don't know what I mean, I think it was something Ohara said in one of his videos. Like, the ritual where people become brothers exchanging sake cups is called a Sakazuki. And the name of our Admiral Akainu is Sakazuki. So, they became brothers through this ritual and they, the brotherhood ended, or like, one of the brothers died as through a Sakazuki as well. I just think if that actually is something Oda had in mind, it's pretty cool. But there are many things people are like, oh, Oda planned that from so many ages ago. But it's just like he picked, saw, remembered something or went through the earliest chapters and was like, that's a cool concept. I'll pick that up again. This man can remember everything. And we also know the One Piece exists. The One Piece is real. Everybody is going to, like, I guess the, Mer the Whitebeard soldiers could spread those news, like, around and tell all the other people that the One Piece is real and they need to search and, that, like, a second wave of the Great Pirate Age might come. But all of that is stuff that is going to happen in, to in the future. And this has been the Marine Four arc. We are now at the very end of this, not of the whole what-if scenario, but the what-if scenario about what Luffy changed because from now on it's going to be a bit harder there's still going to be things like in the post-war arc which I'm going to talk about next week and other arcs which uh, included Luffy uh, like I guess the whole cake island arc and all of that stuff but we need to see how that is going to turn out in the next time I still need to think more about what I'm going to do after the post-war arc because all of the stuff is going to be a lot more work because I need to actually... I'm not just going through the story and say like, oh yeah, that changed, that changed. I need to write my own story basically. But I think I have enough ideas for it to be interesting and I already teased some of them in earlier parts of this uh, series. So I still hope to look forward to those videos. And until the next time, I hope you have a great week and we see each other again on the next video.